include it as Easter eggs. What's going on, guys? I'm assuming this is live because that's how it always goes, even though it doesn't say live. Now it says you're live. Guaranteed that it was live before that, though. I can even see me talking to my daughters because that's how this works so god bless this system man i just gotta tell you let me remind you you can check me out at twitter.com forward slash lore reloaded as well as twitch.tv forward slash lore reloaded at some point i do intend to return to twitch hope all of you guys can check me out there um because i want to start gaming again just hanging out with you guys having fun like we used to i just don't think people would watch it i think i'd actually lose subscribers and views if i did it uh, on youtube Got Polal in the house, 14K Liam, Orataka Tinga, all of the regulars here because that's how we roll. Let me know how all the audio is going and all of that good stuff. And of course, if you're watching, don't forget to tip your waitress and hit that like button. You look like that guy from BSG. Well, there was a lot of guys in BSG. I'm hoping you're talking more uh, about um, uh, the engineer and the mechanic guy. Yeah, the engineer who, uh, oh, I forget his name, who was a wonderful character until in the end he found out what he really was and then he turned into a jerk for some reason. Uh, just got notification to come here five minutes late. Not five minutes late, brother. Have not been on for five minutes. Andre, good evening to you as well. Morning in yours. Uh, Mulgrew versus Seven of Nine, says Nassim Agdom. Good evening, fam, or morning for those who are... In a place where it's morning. Thumbed up and just got here. Love it, Mistress of Love. All right, so we're going to be talking about basically whatever you guys want to talk about. But for the most part, at least starting off, we're going to be talking about Kate Mulgrew. Because I continue to get... Tyrrell was the name of the engineer. I continue to get uh, questions uh, how I feel about what Kate Mulgrew said. Uh, talking about, you know, DS9. Talking about Nostalgia Trek in general. And again, just whatever you guys want to talk about. I mean, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. People will often uh, be surprised how actors respond when something goes public. Or not necessarily public. I don't want to use the word viral, but get some traction. I've followed Kate Mulgrew for a long time. I think she's funny, wonderful, personable. I really hope to meet her at, at some time. But uh, she has been consistently very critical of Hollywood and saying that it's male dominated and that uh, even on Deep Space Nine there were men trying to keep her down so her saying that the original series was misogynistic regardless of whether it was or not isn't actually surprising for anyone who follows her Ripley Riley uh, someone I have had a relationship with in the past is on you complete me too good buddy uh, he is a um, he has a wonderful video about uh, things he keeps in his car. It's just, it's just, you know, just if I if I can find it, I'll share it. Uh, but back to Kate Mulgrew. Kate Mulgrew herself, really, again, uh, has always been consistently harsh uh, on Trek, and her saying that the original series was misogynistic or quote unquote problematic uh, isn't something that is really that surprising to me especially if you follow her on twitter she this again just something that she does so the question really is is was she right a lot of people for whatever reason seem to get very very upset um about the fact that she said that but if you were someone who is a Trek fan who has actually watched the original series, I sincerely don't know how you can't come to that conclusion on your own. Uh, Ray Wyatt was going on. The original series was done in the 60s, uh, as we've kind of discussed before. And in the 60s, there was a lot of questionable, by 2019 standards, things that happened. Uh, in fact, Gene was very, uh, he was a very weird guy and had some very questionable, um, had some very questionable, uh, comments and things that he've said. And I mean, if we're being honest, when it comes to Shatner, Shatner has always been inappropriate and weird. Uh, not only was he inappropriate on screen, which is what they told him to do, uh, I think his interactions, at least historically with people, have been a little bit off as well. If you look at 
I forget. They did a documentary um, talking about uh, not a documentary. You had Shatner as the host and it was like the captain's chair or something like that, where he would go and talk to all the different captains. So he talked to, um, he talked to the person who played Cisco. He talked to the person who played Sulu. He talked to the person who played, uh, Archer and, you know, kind of made a, a really, uh, focus. And he talked to Kate Mulgrew and I felt in that, and I'll try to find it, but I felt he was pretty inappropriate with her because he touched her or touched her knee or touched her side. And you could see she would either pull away from him or move his hand away. He was pretty inappropriate uh, in that, in my opinion. So, and, and again, I would, I would almost say that's based on, you know, the time that he grew up in. Uh, so for her to say, you know, the original series was misogynistic. I don't know that she's necessarily wrong. I think there are things done in the original series that are not okay by 2019 standards. Andrew Maddox helping the channel. As you guys know, the only way that I keep the lights on is through super chats, Patreon people join memberships, hit join, become a, a member today uh, and support through viewers like you. Thank you so much. Andrew Maddox. Good to see you stream lore. Good to see you stream, Andrew. I'm trying to do it at least once a day now. I'm really pushing for that. Uh, but you know, and, and I say all this to end it like this, Lord cats. I'm glad Lord Kex. I'm glad you made it as well, uh, to end it like this as time progresses, things become more and more inappropriate. It's just the way things are. We either become more sensitive or we learn when things are wrong. Sometimes I think we're, uh, more sensitive. Sometimes I think, uh, we just learned that something was wrong. And if you noticed, the uh, the picture I used was from when DS9 and Quark uh, dressed up as a woman, right? Uh, historically, that's always been done as a joke. It's always been, make sanity great again. <laughs> Quark, uh, people dressing up as a woman or dressing up as a lady or whatever, has always been played as a joke, which is, that was played as a joke, right? Uh, just people having fun. Uh, and I don't know that that's entirely appropriate when you kind of consider how, uh, how that could have made people feel or, or how it could impact other people. <clears throat> I know a lot of people are going to get mad that I say that, but this is, again, the, the channel is just a conversation and I'm trying to point out, maybe you disagree with that. Maybe you think the DS9 episode was fine. I'm sure there are DS9, TNG and Voyager episodes that by 2019 standards, uh, aren't looked upon great. So it's just the way things are. It's just the way things go to resolute germs point saying it's still a joke. That's true. I think that it's probably fundamentally different, uh, that DS9 episode versus some of the things that happen in the original series. Um, so I will grant that, but still, I'm just trying to make a point, you know, Alexander Hagen given $14.99. Thank you so much. Truly again, guys, you don't know how much that helps me out. Um, but yeah, so I mean, Kate Mulgrew says this something, a lot of people get upset about it. She says a lot of things. I don't know why let's focus on what she says and look at the content there. And again, and I'd love if you guys disagree with me. Let's let's have a conversation. I just don't necessarily think she's wrong. And, you know, again, if you think she is or you think I am, let me know. But the more I watched the original series, the more I think that they did some things that were inappropriate. And the more of um, the more the the male crew, especially Kirk acts, I think, is something that I would not like if it occur if it happened to my um, to one of my daughters when they when they get older. Right. So Hauntus Farmer says DS9 also had the best cipher for a TG woman, Dax. Best cipher. Hauntus, can you ex expand on that? You don't have to give a super chat, but can you expand on that? Do at lore reloaded so I can see it. Uh, had the best cipher for a TG woman, Dax. Uh, Broken Eyes says, I don't think it's fair to criticize Toss. There's only so much time to work on something. I don't understand your argument there. Uh, I think you can make something low budget and still... Uh, not be inappropriate with other people. Uh, I'm not completely sure where you're going with that. 
Uh, Schneeflock, as humanity evolves, our stigma and cultural views expand and contract, sometimes overcompensating. It is our job to try and see the whole picture, not just what society sees. I'd agree with that. The whole lady's clothing on a man comedy trope is a great way to spot the snowflakes because I have to, because I have no patience for people who are so easily offended, said Mike Vasquez. So are you, are you upset with me now that I pointed out that people could be offended with that? Do you think, do you think I'm wrong that that could, that could unnecessarily, uh, cause, uh, pain to somebody? Because, I mean, I would sincerely attribute it to... I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying that it can cause... It can be inappropriate, at least for some people. Uh, a lot of people cannot take criticism of their faith. Uh, if any time something happens with Star Trek and they attack religion, all of a sudden that's a huge issue these days. Um, and, you know, someone said it... Uh, before I get into that, Resolute Germ, you can't judge something from 50 years ago by today's standards. Completely disagree. I completely and utterly disagree. I think that you can judge some something by the standards of the day in which you live. That said, I don't think you should be too harsh on a person for how they acted 50 years ago. Or I, I, there has to be a bit of understanding. You can both, and this is, this is something our society doesn't understand. You can both disagree with something but understand that it was something that happened. Not that it's good, not that you think it's right, but it's, it's just, it is what it is. And while you can constantly say that it's wrong, you don't necessarily judge the person too harshly because that's the culture they were in, right? Uh, I, I, I think that those two things can happen. Of course, in at least the US uh, culture, you cannot do that these days. In my opinion, DS9 has changelings. If you want to see it, could be stand-in for gender fluids and what have you. Uh, I think that's a stretch, but maybe. Uh, Mike Vesquez says no, responding to me when I asked him if he thinks less of me. No, you are addressing it in a very simple manner, so now I'm not the least bit mad at you. Okay. Well, I mean, it's just, it's just a conversation we're having, right? So someone said, when will Discovery be problematic? In my opinion, Discovery is already problematic because they had... And, you know, people disagree with me on this, but I really, they had inferred and implied sexual assault and uh, justified it by, even though all of these things, it went back and it showed someone doing it, as far as we can tell, against their will. At the time, ultimately, uh, <laughs> Ripley, you're stupid. <laughs> I just, I read what Riley just said and uh, he's... Okay, where did it, where was it? What was it? So, uh, you can imply it, as long as at the end they agree to it, it's okay to imply that it happened for four episodes or whatever. For those who don't know, Riley's a friend of mine. He's, um, we've hung out a lot in the past, but we really haven't gotten to see each other, uh, like in forever. He's, he's probably one of the most liberal people I know in real life. That's why he's saying that, because he's taking a shot at me. Uh, but Riley says Kate Mulgrew would look better if she smiled more because he just likes mocking me. 100% American Buffalo says hi, everyone. Just drop by to say hi. What's going on, American Buffalo? When one can change form so perfectly as the changelings, what does it mean to be male or female? Sure, I guess. Russian-sounding name, Vovo Cat. I don't know. For me, Star Trek always surprised me as something very progressive in a good way, assuming the culture's around me. I, you know... Something can be progressive and still be uh, somewhat sexist. I, I think I think it would be fair to say that um, I think it'd be fair to say that uh, the original series was fairly progressive. They still had sexism in it for the time, right? Sixties TV didn't handle female characters well. They made them basically the screen track and always needed to be saved. They were a common trope in the sixties. They also had. Um, things that were counter uh intuitive so there's dialogue that indicates no female officers were uh there's dialogue indicative that the no female officers ever were in charge of uh ships now this was done by an insane person so it's likely that's how they get around it i, I don't think originally when it was written that it was meant that there were. I, th I think they meant it to mean that female captains literally did not. There were no female captains at that time. 
Uh, but it was said by the character who was supposed to be uh, insane, so I think they get around it that way, and uh, future canon uh, will rewrite that and will retcon it for all intents and purposes. And with the ex with a few exceptions, uh, there were females that um, were portrayed as crazy and that was normalized in the show. And that's not even talking about when Kirk was... A, was uh, Pretty pervy. Jorge War Crimes says, Laura Reloaded was watching a, vid a Vietnam War documentary and saw a woman from the Highlands and her arms were ripped. This lady, who likely never went to a gym, has biceps. I'm salty. What a weird thing to say. What's going on with you, Jorge? We got German Trekking in the house. Y'all should check out his channel. He also has a uh, live stream happening in less than 24 hours that he keeps pinging me about because I always miss his live streams. Hauntus Farmer, progressive is relative to the time it is made. All things are relative to the times they are made. A conservative in the 1800s is not a conservative in, the tw in 2019. A liberal in 1700s is not liberal today. Everything is, um, is, uh, is, you know, two is relative to the time it was made. That's just... Michelle Nichols has commented that when Kirk and Spock were off the bridge that they would put a male ensign in charge instead of Lieutenant Uhura. Yeah, my, you know, I don't, um, I don't disagree with that. The only thing I would say is that uh, Uhura's job as a communications officer may not lend itself to being uh, in charge, right? Uh, I know they tried to do this in TNG, but I would no more put a counselor in charge of a warship during a combat time uh dinner during a military conflict then i would have a tactical officer with no training try to counsel someone who's going through the loss of a loved one uh so if you had a we'll say lieutenant uh counselor who is in the medical field and an ensign uh military person command person uh, or tactical person, I could see why an ensign would be put in charge simply because their training is geared towards that. All I'm saying is that I'm disappointed in myself because a lady who never went to a gym once has better arms than me. Makes me very sad. Well, you can, Jorge, you, you should, you should work out. You can do it. You got it. Um, Well, and Hauntus, Hauntus says, you know, that makes sense. 1960 Trek is as far from us now as 1860s Our American Cousin was from 1920. Think about that. Of course, it looks regressive to us now. Well, yeah, I mean, we either we either learn what we've done is wrong or we, add to put it, what someone said before, overcompensate. So, yeah, of course, things uh, look different. And, of course, we, we don't do certain things today that we did then. Uh... I mean, it's just, it's fluid, right? TNG did let Dr. Crusher take the captain's chair at night. I remember an episode where she was talking about her rank. Yeah, Cora, and I said TNG, um, TNG did this. And I think that was the wrong mistake. Or I think that was a mistake. Well, I don't know. They let Crusher do it, but she was supposed to have command training too. She was supposed to go through the training um, piece of it. Uh so if she has command training and she's the highest ranking, then yeah, I guess I, I could see that. Continuum Trek, another good channel y'all should go uh, check out. So I don't, um, I'm on the fence when it comes to Crusher. I especially don't think she should have been in charge during the Borg attack. I think that was inappropriate. Not because it's Crusher or she's female, but because she's in the medical division. And I would feel much better if someone in the tactical or command division was taking care of issues that centered on tactical and command uh, objectives. The number one thing that sucks about doing something like saying you are liberal or conservative is that at some point there will be stuff you don't agree with within your group. Labels suck. Cyborg XG1, it is worse than that. Tribes suck. Uh... If you don't agree with everything on one side or you don't um, or you don't at least pretend to, it can be the worst thing on the Internet. I swear to God, 
I I don't necessarily subscribe to many, if any, tribes. I'm sure there's something you could find that I would I would agree with or call myself an in-group on. But I I can't stand it. My politics generally are are all over the place. And I um I don't think that you should be one for one thing or another. But if you're not, you get hit from both sides. It is so much easier just to be all for the cause one way or the other and just to, to heck with everything else, you know? Really, honest to God, is. Uh, in the real Navy, a doctor or counselor would be called a restricted line officer, meaning they can't command a ship at sea. And, and you see, that's, that's the way, that's what makes the most sense to me. I have not ever been in the military, uh, so I don't necessarily know what's going on. But just a medical officer just doesn't have the training. A medical officer... Yeah just doesn't have the training to command a ship, especially when it's uh, in during times of war. What's up? Nothing. Nothing? Yeah, I'm you, just hitting that. You want to tell them what you're doing tonight? Yeah. What are you doing tonight? Mimi and Grandpa. Okay, so you're going to the grandparents. What are you doing before that? Um, we're going to tell them about the baby reindeer. Going to school. Going to school. That's right. They have an event you're going to, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm gonna tell Mimi and Grandpa what a baby deer. Yeah, you're gonna tell them about that you saw a baby deer? Oh, and remember you um, are developing me getting a channel? Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. All I just wanted to go. tell the viewers that because that's. Because I think they're gonna, and you're gonna get a new alpha. Yep, alright, go play. We'll be leaving soon. Crusher always said she would not want to be in command any time. Well, she took it. I feel far better with Tasha Yar being in command over Crusher, just having better training for the role. Yeah, I think that's what it, it comes down to, honestly. Um, but going to our society, it's hard to say things like that. It's like, I don't think Crusher sh could be in command because she doesn't have, uh, she doesn't have the training, right? Uh... And so, you know, you say, well, she didn't have command training and people like, well, you're just, you're just making up excuses. Just making up excuses. Please ask the spawn how they feel about Kate Mulgrew's comment. I feel like they, they probably would not be able to answer that. Uh, Trek Yards in, in their reviews have pointed out Dr. Crusher was actually very well written. I don't know that I agree with that. Um, there are, there's an episode where she doesn't know what or how a splint works and she is generally relegated and there are points where when she gets drunk, apparently she wants to have sex with almost everybody, uh, or at least a few select people because that's what women do when they get drunk. They just want to have sex with everybody. You know how promiscuous that can, they can be. Um, I, I don't know that I necessarily agree with that, but maybe. I don't know. I'm not saying they're wrong. It all comes down to opinion. Um, she's better written than uh, Janeway, for sure. She is more consistent and can be a, a stronger character. But it, it also comes down to the way the... Um, it also comes down to the way that it was written, the ensemble piece, and the focus being on, you know, Picard, being on Riker, being on Data. Uh, I despise Mulgrew's comments, but they might have some truth to them when you give them an even-handed examination. I, as someone who has watched the original series a couple of times and is doing more and more lore reviews uh, on it, I, I uh, think that... I think that Kate Mulgrew's statement, or at least her feeling on it, is fair. You know? You know, I, again, don't take me wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm not outright disagreeing with Trek Yards or anything or saying they're wrong necessarily. It's just, you know, and that might be something we have a conversation with. I've been meaning to do uh, another video with them, both on my channel and uh, on theirs. Kirk was a ladies' man, and he couldn't have committed long-term relationship with a woman. He couldn't have a committed. He tried a couple times. He, he was never successful, though. Crusher had potential, but I feel like it was mostly wasted. Maybe. Uh, 
I don't think she was ever the focus. I don't think uh, Dr. Crusher or, or uh, Beverly was ever really a focus for the <clears throat> TV series. So they didn't expand her as much as they could. At what point does compensation for past offense override actual skill and merit? When when do we place a minority in the captain's chair instead of someone trained but in the majority? So, Schneeflock, I'm, I honestly am not going to <laughs> get into that all that much. I'm still very much a merit-based uh, person. I think that you should be there based on your skill. Uh, I have had some people... Uh, I have had some people uh, successfully argue to me why someone may not have the opportunity to get the skill that others may, but I, I honestly I do not want to get into that conversation. Bird of Prey 5 in the house. He has a pretty good channel. Bird of Prey 5 actually uh, takes a, an interesting look at things. He, um, he does, uh, I forget, I watch it, but man, it's just escaping me. Like from the chair or from the... Um, from the bed chair or something. He, he actually uh, looks and talks about things uh, when it comes to track and others from a, a really interesting and niche perspective, I'd say. So you might consider taking a look at him. Toss isn't misogynistic. Roddenberry probably was, as was normal for Hollywood at the times. You know, you can't really... <laughs> Toss isn't misogynistic. Just the, the creator, the writers, and the execs who all put everything together was. Um, you know... The, uh, oh man, I don't. The head of the Ku Klux Klan isn't racist; just all of the cells that make him. Uh, I think that the original series has misogynistic elements. I don't think it was overall misogynistic. I don't think it was an attack on women. I just think it was for the time. Yeah, Bird of Prey Five. His um, his series is called Bed Life. It's really interesting. I I like I like channels that do different takes on stuff. I like channels that. You know, not just another review channel, but they, they do something with it. And I, I think he has an interesting way. Uh, unfortunately, I have to go now. I have to get some sleep after some days without sleep. And for tomorrow, see you around. Hey, German Trek, I'll, re I'll respond to you on Facebook later. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to it. The comment was accurate for today's climate. I was watching recently some of the original Siri Toss episodes, and it does not work for t from today's perspective. Uh, I'd agree with that. Sometimes you need to kill to survive, and having someone who took an oath to do no harm isn't the best choice for leadership. You know, I think there's two points to that. I don't. I think that that oath doesn't necessarily include uh, self-defense. Toss is also one of the first TV series to present women in positions of authority. Ahura especially was a very important character. It goes back to, yeah, you take it easy too, Hauntus. Thanks for coming, buddy. Um... No problem, Miss Lo Mist of Live. If you're heading out, talk to you later. Um, Toss is also one of the first... You know, it was a mixed bag. Yeah, they, they did some aspects. They had uh, a diverse cast. They had... Uh, and, you know, Gene Ronberry likes to take a lot of credit for things he had no, no uh, actual say in, but we're not even going to get into that. Um, a diver it had diverse cast, it had female officers, it had people interacting, they didn't have any hate or, or anything like that anymore. Um, but the mixed bag, women were treated sometimes as objects. They were treated as prizes. Even crew. Kirk would treat crew like, um, like either a prize or an object. Uh, multiple times. <sighs> Well, the Schneeflock, anyone else notice that both the white male captains have longer ships than the woman, and every white captain has a bigger ship than the black captain? Except, Schneeflock, the black captain uh, was in charge of an entire space station and was basically the Christ figure of Bajor. So, yeah. Ohora? It's Ohora. It's Ohora. U-H-R. Ohora, I think is how you say it. I've come to personally despise how Bones treated Spock. You know, I didn't, honestly. When it comes down to the Spock and uh, Bones, Spock and, yeah, Spock and Bones dynamic, that was more friends. Um, Schneefloke jokes. Yeah, I, I figured you were joking, man. Um, 
that was just friends being friends around each other. Even if it, even if we look at it as inappropriate, both of them uh, went at each other. Uh, like uh, in the um, episode, let this be our last battlefield. Uh, Spock picked a fight with Bo with uh, McCoy when McCoy was agreeing with him. So there's an ep the in, there's a scene where they're talking about the guy being half black, half white, and it's like you know this is this isn't standard, this is an anomaly, this is unique. And McCoy says, you know, I agree with Spock. And Spock looks up at him and says something to, uh, and he says, you know, he, so McCoy says, I agree with Spock, and I'm I'm trying to treat him, but I'm not completely sure uh, what's going on here. And Spock uh, looks up at McCoy and says, you know, uh, so you don't know what you're doing. You're just going to pump your noxious uh, potions into him and hope it works. Uh, and, you know, then McCoy goes off and talks about how, you know, the blood works, oxygenating blood and even green blood uh, can be oxygenated and stuff like that. You know, so it goes back and forth. In that episode, Spock picked a fight with McCoy. Uh... Love your streams and vids. Keep doing what you do. Timmy, I love you. I love you. Go be with your go be with your kids. If I keep reading the chat, we are all talking about topics you're interested in. The sun will set before you realize it. I know being a dad myself. I I hang out with my kids quite a bit. I appreciate your uh, feedback on that, but you know, I've just started streaming now and I take them to go swimming and stuff like that, but um yeah. Also, doing these things helps me continue to make money, and they like eating, so I'm pretty sure they're okay. But I get what you're saying, Cyborg. I do. Yeah. Hey, what? I was just told to come play with you. What's what is this? She built it. Oh, you what? built it? Oh, yeah. Look at that. And I got a couple more of these. That's yeah, cool. It's yeah. a little veterinarian thing. Now we need to show them. You want to show them real quick? Yeah. See it right there? Show it right. Nope. Come back. And look at this. The camera's right there. That's just so we can see. So your veterinarian stuff. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Raven, you want to take this back, baby? Yeah, we, I have one more that I will bring up in. Okay. Yeah, it's the best one. It's actually quite good. <sighs> Adlore Reloaded. More to the point, the Cisco had a warship which could put a hurt on anything in Starfleet. I agree with that. Here's something I'd like to make a question on. Star Trek has a species-centric theme, so theme to it. So here it is. DS9 is my favorite Trek. Cyborg, didn't mean it as a bad thing at all, and you slammed me in the best way possible. I wouldn't question your dad's skills. Yeah, I didn't think you were putting me down, dude. I didn't think at all. Oh, well, cool. Whoa. What, how cool is that? Did... They like making veterinarian things, and apparently there's an acorn in it. Um, it's supposed to be a forest. It's um. Oh, it's a forest? Mm -hmm. Okay. With acorns in them. Whoa, you okay? It's fine. Okay. No, I'm more I'm more concerned about you than I am the pizza. Are you okay? Okay. I knew you were messing with me, Cyber. Uh, hey, Laura, any chance of episode by episode review live streams for episodes? No, I'm not gonna do live stream reviews. Uh, I may. Uh, I may do a a review of it and then open a live stream to discuss it with me. Um. I'm on the fence about doing reviews. I put it, I put in my community. If you guys don't watch, definitely hit that icon so you get updates. I do community questions based on answers. I kind of try to fit my stuff around it. And I did ask the question, you know, should I start doing reviews? And I'm on the fence about that. Someone made a good point that you can go anywhere to get reviews that uh, my channel is, is niche, that, that lore is what I do well. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, if I do do it, what's going to happen is I'm going to do reviews. I'm going to do a review that I upload, and then I may do a live stream if you guys want to talk about it. Uh, Finn apparently likes my pin. Finn apparently thinks that I have beautiful white children. I technically can't have more. I can't have any more without surgery. Oh, Discovery, why do I think making Burnham an actual Vulcan would be a better idea? I would buy that more besides a non-human main character, progressive and stuff. Yeah, her having a... No, playing Vulcan is hard to do. I don't blame her. What's up, babe? I, I want to talk to you guys. All right, say, say a couple things, then i got to make a video, okay? You, you guys, if you subscribe, you get to see more of us, and maybe even you get to see my channel. I'll, we'll tell you about that. Yeah, we'll be doing your channel soon, babe. Okay. I'm super excited. Love you. All right, go play, okay? 
Hey, Laura, what's an obscure species in Shrek you would like to see again? Um, more of them from Sharon would be interesting. Also, uh, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. When it comes to Burnham, a lot of people like to call Burnham a Mary Sue. I would say that it's definitely possible. She's poorly written at a minimum. Um, I do think, I think Mary Sue does fit Burnham as much as it does uh, Wesley. I think Wesley's a Mary Sue character too. Uh, I think they would have done with Wesley what they're doing with Burnham if they had had the technology they do today. And that is true. If the like button is great, it means you did not like the video. More people that like it, the more people see it, the more we can have conversations like this, the more we can do. It's a shame we never go to find out what happened to the Dominion have had done if they would have learned about Section 31. Yeah, I mean, maybe they'll talk about it in Picard. I don't know. You know? It is possible that in Picard we will learn more. I'm trying to get a friend into Star Trek. How do I start and how do I get them through the majority? Well, Schneeflock, I mean, we've talked about this before. It comes down to what your friends like. Have your friends seen any of the movies? Did they like did they like JJ Trek? Um, have they seen Discovery? Did they like Discovery? Uh, or if they haven't watched any of it, what kind of movies do they like when it comes to science fiction? Do they like things that are similar to JJ Trek? Or are they more like the motion picture uh, type deal? It really depends on the friend how you want to introduce them to it, you know? What makes for an interesting Star Trek character? Would Luoxana Troy be an interesting character? I don't think Luoxana Troy is an interesting character, though we don't, have a, we don't know enough about her to really uh, be in depth. What makes an interesting Star Trek character is what makes any character interesting. Uh, most characters that are interesting, uh, most heroes that are interesting, need to have a quality that they are that they're really good at uh, generally a positive quality that they're really good at that they've taken to an extreme that makes them um negative so it, it it comes down to a character has to be dynamic they have to have positive and negative qualities and generally they need to have some quality that uh expands uh, who they are and, and what they want to do. Let me give you an example. Uh, Cisco. When we first meet Cisco, uh, his one of his qualities is he's very focused on family. He's very focused on uh, taking care of people and and being very, uh, you know, uh, a family man. And he was also a Starfleet officer, and he was very dedicated to being a Starfleet officer. And after the attack of Wolf 359 and him losing his wife, it basically changed him to where he was focused, so focused with his hatred. He, his family meant so much to him that the loss of his wife made him go and create weapons of death to kill Borg, which is as far from Starfleet um, ethos as you can get, and then ultimately made him want to leave Starfleet. And so he has to overcome uh, what is starts out as a positive trait, right? And so you have to have a, any character has to have different dynamic flaws. And that goes for Starfleet, Star Trek characters as well. Uh, Luke Bennett, I want to say that I look forward to your videos whenever they come out. Keep it up. Well, I look forward to you watching them. I have been dying to ask you, would you have wanted to see how the DS9 crew fared? You guys there? It said you weren't receiving something for a second. Okay, sorry. I guess we're back. Um, I think it would have been excellent. Uh, and it would have brought it back around. I think that, you know, Picard uh, took something from... Or not Picard, but Lucutus. Picard as Lucutus took something from Cisco. And so pulling that back and having... Um, Cisco and Picard team up to defeat the Borg, and, and, and ending that arc would have been nice. Have to catch the rest on replay. Enjoy the weekend. Talk to you later, Andrew. Thank you again for the support. Um, that's what I, that's why I love Ben Cisco. They killed my wife. I'll do, I'll do, I will do to them what the Imperial of Man does to the Xenos. Blessed is the enraged Cisco. Yeah, and I mean, but 
but here's the thing. That's what makes him a good character is that you take this. He, he loves and wants to defend his family. He loves and wants to defend his friends. He loves and wants to defend, you know, what he holds dear. And if you push him too far, he becomes enraged. He becomes, um, uh, almost unreasonable. He becomes what we don't expect from the Starfleet ethos. And so you take a good quality, you give a negative spin to it and have him overcome it or use it for good. Makes a good character. That's, that's the problem with, that's the problem with Michael. They try, they honest to God try, but they really don't. When you really look at the character, she has very few flaws, if any. She is almost 100% perfect. And those and the problem is is all of those positives, all of those advantages aren't turned into negatives at any point. We need weaknesses. Yes, a 9-year-old, a 9-year-old knows. Yeah, a 9 and 4-year-old. Right. It's going to win. It's going to win. It's so boring. Right. You have a weakness. Exactly. All right, we'll be leaving soon, girls, so make sure you got on shoes and everything. I really like Jordy as a character. He's an amazing specialist, yet kind of a loser. He is geeky in universe, has some holodeck creep stuff going on, and his best friend is a robot. Not a perfect guy. I would, I would say those are some things. Slideshow says my little ones are cute. Thank you. Yeah, you know, one of the things about the live streams is I just didn't do them because of the kids. Because, you know, I didn't know if there'd be a lot of interruption. I didn't want to take time away from them, kind of like what we said. But I finally figured, you know, again, transparency. This is what the channel is. This is what you're going to get, right? Cora B, what I loved about Seven of Nine is she wasn't perfect. I would I'd agree there. Um, and, you know, to that point, Seven of Nine is kind of the reverse when you look at it. Seven of Nine was a Borg, right? And so when she first leaves, she still wants to be a Borg. She still has social problems. She's not good at interaction, right? Um, and then in later episodes, she talks about how being a Borg brings a oneness, a centeredness, a, a regiment to her life. And how, she, um, and how she uses that. And so it's kind of the reverse where you take a negative of being a Borg and then turn it into something positive. You know, imagine believing Star Trek is not diverse enough, says Nassim. I would agree. I agree with Discovery's Michael. She's annoying and the whole show stinks. The only thing I like is the ships. They can have good episodes, but I don't like it overall. I agree. If you want to change, you should change for yourself and not allow anyone to pressure you to change. I generally agree with that, Charles. Uh, I think there are some exceptions, but overall, I guess. Cisco was supposed to be the first contact, as the rumor has it. Cisco was supposed to be in first contact. I've never heard that. I, I have never heard that. Um, if if that was the case and they didn't do it, that's unfortunate. Uh, you know, honest, honestly, I think it should have been... Um, I think they should have had the Borg attack Earth and the crew of um, DS9 team up with the crew of Enterprise uh, to stop the Borg. And then you have the power dynamic between Cisco and Picard and, you know, um, the hatred coming back with, uh, with uh, Cisco. I think Anti-Tracker actually did a really interesting take on that in his review of First Contact one of the videos that reviewed it. All right, guys, we'll be ending this very shortly. Uh, so if you guys have anything you want to add or any questions, we can, we can definitely go down that route and uh, discuss it wherever you want to go. Star Trek is strong. It has endured for 50 years. It endured CBS executives and discovery. It will endure a little criticism. I get the reference, Kevin. I get the reference... What if the Borg attacked Bajor and took over the wormhole? Um, I think that could have that'd be intriguing. I don't think we'd be as interested, and I'm not sure why the Borg would go after Bajor. Uh, still having it go after Earth and having the Defiant come to assist may
times of sense, especially since the Defiant was specifically built to defeat the Borg. Have a good weekend to you and your family, Lore, and the rest of us here. You too, Commander. Sloan. Feels very monochromatic visually, still great. Okay. That seemed to fix it for some reason. Huh. Let me see. I don't know. I'm going to assume that you can still see me. All right. Uh, but yeah, did you guys have anything else you want to talk about before we uh, end this popsicle stand? CBS and Paramount wouldn't come to a deal on the whole DS9 crew. They were lucky to get war, uh, Worf in the Defiant. Well, that's unfortunate. Star Trek characters whose family members killed by the Borg, Picard, Cisco 7, and Sauron. The only difference between the four is Sauron went mad and became a total Gillian. Technically, technically, uh, at least Seven of Nine's dad was still there and still assimilated. That would have been Chakotay that uh, killed, uh, killed her dad when he destroyed the Borg uh, vessel. How do you feel about them turning Sulu... Gay and beyond. I feel like it was pandering, and it puts down both the people they were trying to pander to, as well as the um, original character. The original character was was most definitively not gay or homosexual. Uh, the character who played Sulu, I, I tend to agree with what he said on that. I have a theory that the Admiral from DS9, the die is cast, is a changeling. We've seen that it was the case for the Romulans and the Klingons. Uh, maybe... Must be 40 seconds delayed. Yeah, it's having some hiccups. It is having some extreme hiccups. I guess we'll probably use that as an excuse just to end it. Um, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'm going to see you on the next. Lore Reloaded. Now I'm going to go quiet, you guys.